really the Digital Commonwealth was a project that was that was supported by a charitable organisation that enabled us to, as it was put here on the, on the kind of title, uh, to develop a creative response to the Commonwealth Games from across Scotland. So the Commonwealth Games happened in Glasgow in 2014. Um, and I guess the intention of the project that I'm going to talk about was that we kind of try and create sort of a diverse range of, of voices coming across uh, communities uh, across Scotland from a different range of different people. Um, three main elements to this project that I'm going to talk about. So one of them is the community media, the development of community media clusters across Scotland. Um, schools programme, which very much focused in on working with primary and secondary age school children um, to, to contribute and to produce some form of media around about these games. And also a third element, these creative voices. And creative voices was a, a, more, a, a project focused around about film, creative writing and community songwriting another mechanism for people to have voice. So that's not necessarily a digital dimension, but the way that the project worked, we, we, we tried to digitize everything that was produced and make sure that was available to people to access and engage with. So we'll go into some detail about these uh, in the next couple of slides. But it was also important for us to, to try and ensure that as I sort of created this project, that we were thinking broadly about the process around about a, a practice research project. So this project had practice elements within it, and I'll describe those in a moment, uh, where we actually went out with creative practitioners and delivered a variety of, of workshops and, and, and learning environments and interventions uh, with a range of publics. But also there's also a dimension that's about research. What does this mean? What does the involvement within this project and people producing content, thinking about the, how they've learned about using the digital, what does that mean for our, our understandings of of digital and maybe some of the barriers, but also potentially some ways of overcoming some of those barriers. So to contextualize that, I guess I'm interested in what I'm starting to call creative, uh, critical digital citizenship in terms of both in formal and informal settings and thinking about how people can actually be engaged in practice and think about actually some of the opportunities of the digital, but also some of the limits of the digital through that practice, rather than simply engaging in a formal learning environment where that happens, either in school or otherwise. Um, I'm interested in ensuring that, that digital literacy and digital media particularly uh, is available to people to exploit the opportunities that are presented by what we sometimes think at least is, is a, a more democratic media environment. Um, so that's crucial to the way that, that this project was, in, was envisaged and devised and, and developed. Um, Crucially, thinking about not just how you produce the media, which is something that we worked on quite a lot within the project, but also about how that media is made and helping people to understand where you host it, what that might mean, what happens when an external audience wishes to engage with that and interact with it. So that, again, we're thinking about that idea of, of digital literacies. And so with Digital Commonwealth, the idea was to, to sort of make media with people using devices that we already have and that many people have in their pockets. And that was one of the insightful things about the project is that most of the people we interacted with had a device that could make media, that could produce video, could produce audio, could, could be used for social media, for example. Um, but also trying to think about how that's made and use that as a mechanism to, as I describe it here, by stealth, uh, engage around about broader issues of digital literacy and perhaps digital rights as a part of that process. Um, so some of the detail of how we did that is that we devised this project called Digital Commonwealth. Um, the project was involved some academics, it involved a, a range of cre uh, creative practitioners, and also worked with a, a range of different publics that I've identified in the, in the previous slide. And one of the things that we tried hard to do um, was to think about what, what the principles of the project were and how we could articulate those to the people involved. Um, and also how we could think about that fitting in with the practice that we were engaged in, but also thinking in with the, the sort of research that we were also trying to, to develop, some of the kind of understandings and, and knowledge that we're trying to produce as a result of this project. And these are just some of the guiding principles that kind of helped us think about the project um, in terms of what we were about. And, and, and obviously, I'm going to talk in a moment about how, how difficult that may be to follow through on principles that you've developed into the practice and then think about that practice over time. So again, a few of these here, the kind of idea of the Commonwealth, this was the Commonwealth Games that we were interested in, in looking at. Um, and so the kind of focus was around about the idea of the common good uh, and thinking about how we could ensure that those that perhaps were left out of the, the broad and mainstream media uh, around about the games would have a chance to have a degree of voice and think about how they might do that as part of a project like this. Um, 
the kind of idea of common purpose, kind of also playing with this idea of the commons and the commonwealth, right, about how we were thinking about the, the kind of licensing dimension of the, the project and the media that was produced. Ideas of ownership, really crucial to what we tried to do. And ownership in the sense that we believe that where possible that the participants who were involved would create their own content but also retain the ownership of that content and simply share that content with the project in some respects um, but ensure again that, the, that the, the participants and the groups that were involved would understand about how they could host their own content uh, and we also try to support people to host that content themselves so that again they understood the kind of digital space and the media space that they were operating within. Um, Collaboration, key to what we're doing, and key, I'll, I'll talk about that in respect to the sort of research practice dimension as we go through. Um, sharing where possible, try to use kind of, again, the, the sort of creative commons space as a mechanism to ensure that people could share and create media. The, the, the logo we had for the project was able to be used and, and reused by people and, and people could be creative about how they wish to use that. Uh, again, feeding with some of the kind of ideas we're trying to get across about how you can do that and not trying to sort of commercialize these kind of spaces. Um, accessibility was key in respect of the technology, so we'll come back to that a little bit later, but the idea that, again, we wanted to lower the threshold uh, of involvement, that people could get involved even if they didn't have a really big camera uh, and really uh, well-developed skill sets and how to use those. So the idea was to ensure that as many people could get involved without needing to have too much technical skill, and that's, that, that creates its own issues and its own challenges that I'll describe as we go through. And so finally was the idea of archiving, being able to ensure that as, a, as an outcome of the Commonwealth Games, there was an alternative story dimension to, to, that was hosted by our National Library that has a responsibility to archive all games-related material. So again, that there was a separate space where I guess the broader public had an opportunity to, to generate content that could be understood and accepted on that space. So th these sort of principles guided us as we went through the project and, and very much were part of a lot of our workshops and the delivery for the project as well as us thinking about what they meant for the research that we produced. A kind of challenge when you do a project like this is, is where, to, where to put boundaries around about the project and, and how you wish to ensure people can produce media. One of the challenges we've had in a couple other projects we've done is that when it's too broad and people people would like to be involved in creating something, but they're not sure what they would produce and where it would fit within a project. So we, we tried to play with the idea of a Commonwealth, so this was the Commonwealth Games, as I mentioned, and tried to say, well, actually, what are the kind of key sort of thematics we might offer to people, to the groups who we were working with, to say, why not create some content right about some of these, just to allow a little bit of shape to the project. So we have placed people, culture, and exchange that we're open enough for people to actually say, right, we're going to think about the relationship with Commonwealth to a particular place in Scotland, for example, or it may be about a particular culture with other Commonwealth na uh, nations that people may wish to have created content around about. So we had these thematics, as I said, just to provide a little bit of, of structure for, for the groups that we worked with. And, and that worked pretty well in terms of giving people um, some kind of ideas to get their, their practice going. Four, I mentioned the sort of three elements that we built into the project. So the first of those was the kind of idea of, of a community media cafe. So in four parts of Scotland, we worked with creative practitioners and others and ourselves in supporting the development of these uh, community media cafes. And these were about trying to be taster cafes that introduced people within a quite an informal setting, often in place very much in cafes and, and, and social spaces where people could learn about these, these four kind of dimensions, if you like, of, of creating media and disseminating media, so blogging, video, audio, and, and, and social media. Um, very much these were about building a capacity so that when the games themselves came around, that people were, were trained and had the opportunity to actually then create content and share that content whilst the games time was actually taking place. So these were very much about capacity building, given people and doing so in a, an informal environment. We then had these Creative Voices project, which, as I mentioned at the beginning, was around about three creative practices that fit with the interests of our university and our creative school and our university in particular. We worked with colleagues and students and others who were involved in creative writing practice, community songwriting practice, and, and documentary film practice. Um, and we worked with a range of groups that we they identified in our local area that we already had relationships with, and also some new groups. And they included older adults. You see some on the right-hand side of the slides here, some, some people involved in community songwriting, uh, people living with dementia, for example, in our Renfrewshire area uh, of Scotland, quite close to one of our campuses. 
Uh, we also had working with various multicultural groups, um, younger adults and, and, and older adults alike. The idea of the Creative Voices project was that, again, we would produce, that they would produce with support of our, of our creative practitioners, um, material that were linked broadly to these themes around about the Commonwealth. So again, that could be placed to uh, exchange culture. And, and, and that again works really well and produced the, uh, an anthology that we see on the right hand side of the slide. So an anthology produced by, the, uh, by all the participants, which was showcased as part of a, of a end of sub project event that we had last year. So the Creative Voices was kind of again really interesting in terms of allowing people to have a different way of expressing themselves creatively uh, around about the themes that we produced. And I guess one of the most interesting elements of, of this project for, for me and for those involved in it was the schools programme, where we worked across a range of, of local government areas in, in, in Scotland. So there are 32 local authorities, and we worked with about 23 of those local authorities. Um, and what we did is that we went into schools and we, we involved them in a range of digital storytelling workshops, again, focused around the ideas of audio, video, media, um, and blogging. Uh, and we worked with those schools to, again, respond creatively to the themes that we'd sort of set out or asked them to consider uh, around about the Commonwealth Games. The idea was that we were embedded within the school environment and that we, again, were able to go in and work with pupils uh, from different ages. So we had did some transition activities between primary schools and secondary schools working together um, and asked them, again, to be, to be creative and try and kind of own the stories that they produced. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we were... We asked them to, to respond the way they would like to engage with the themes. And the, the real focus of this project was to ensure that people could be creative for themselves within their own space and that our project would enable them to share that with a, a wider audience. So we, we, we helped develop the audience through the kind of websites that we had and then and the social media environments that we used. And um, we, we wanted the schools themselves to work together to think about the curriculum issues they were interested in and how they may use that to produce for example, a podcast like you see on the right hand side, or for example, to produce a blog that, that they use as part of their own um, environment within the schools, um, where they use a, a platform called Glow, which is a, a Microsoft platform. Um, and that idea of being able to encourage the schools to host this content on their own platforms, to get over the kind of technological barriers that are often put in front of them within the school environment, to deal with workarounds where perhaps the the Wi-Fi connection or the broadband connection wasn't great, or to ensure that they thought about purchasing or using equipment that would, they were able to sustain use of beyond the, the end of the project. So we didn't purchase equipment as part of this for schools. We enable, encouraged the schools and worked with the schools to purchase equipment themselves that would enable them to use that equipment in the longer term, which is, again, a kind of key feature of the project to be, to be sustainable about its use and not simply to walk in as a media department with large pieces of equipment that the schools would never be able to afford or use in the future. Uh, and that was that was crucial to how, how we wished to develop the project. We also were very keen, as I mentioned at the beginning, to think about kind of open resources and to make resources available um, so that they went beyond the project and that we weren't, if you like, uh, maintaining kind of copyright on those. So we provided, as part of the training and the workshops that we did with a variety of partners, we developed a set of teaching resources um, on the right-hand side of the slide here, you see that a handbook of digital storytelling that we produced that's available online. It's still there. It gets updated uh, uh, relatively regularly, uh, and we, we use that as part of other projects. Um, and again, what that handbook does or what those resources do is try again to ensure that we give ownership of being able to produce your own media with some interesting guidelines and, and support from others about how you may go about doing that. So it's that informal space of learning that we're trying to kind of uh, make a contribution to. Um, so there's a range of resources that are online there that people that can use as part of their own learning, that teachers can use as part of their own teaching materials if they so wish. Um, again, so that there's not that same reliance upon having to always invite someone in to, to help you to produce that content. Within that content, there's a lot of information around about things to be careful about, things to watch out for, good practice. You may need to consider in terms of some of the the broader issues around about privacy, privacy and security uh, and such like. Again, these are just some of the other resources that we produced as a result of it and, and the sort of tools that we used when we were in schools or we were in uh, working with communities too. Uh, just a range of different uh, approaches that we did just to try and ensure that we got through to, to the individuals involved and the schools involved uh, about what they may wish to do with their practice. 
Um, at times we had to do workarounds, and workarounds may be things like paper tweets, where we actually had to literally do sessions on how to tweet using paper because the schools weren't able to access, um, say, Twitter, or the, the lockdown. Uh, in other local authorities, it was completely different, but it was really open. Um, and there's lots of kind of really interesting learning comes out of that about the way that the education environments uh, in, in Scotland, in this context in particular, um, are, are, are open or otherwise. Many were, were completely locked down. Um, perhaps for good reason, but not really necessarily thinking around about um, some of the, the, the big issues. Um, whereas in other local authority areas, as I mentioned, there's much more openness around about the use of, for example, social media or other or other platforms. And we can discuss some of that at the end if people have any sort of questions around about that. So again, we used, as I said, lots of informal learning materials that we produced and developed uh, as, a, as a facet of this, this project that we continue to use in other work that we do.